Welcome to Race Car Backwards. Yeah, there we go. That's it. Episode 37. Race car spelled backwards is still race car. This is the race car spelled backwards podcast. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Brad, and with me, as always, is Jamie, and this is Race Car Spelled Backwards, episode number 37, as Jamie likes to remind us. You know, episode backward is Edosip. Is that Spanish? Edosip. I think the E's silent. Wouldn't the I be pronounced with I, so it'd be E, Dos, I, Edosip. Vegas backwards is... Sagiva. Sagiv. Sagviv. Gev. That sounds like the... Sagev. Sounds like the used car guy I found on Facebook Marketplace. Sagevi? Yeah. Sagevi. He said it was his personal car, and I showed up, and he had a used car lot. I think it's... Un- um, sa- sa- Sagiv. Yeah, I think Sagiv. It's Russian. Saggy? You think it's Russian? I thought the guy was Iranian, but he could have been Russian. <laughs> Oh, the guy's name at the car dealership. Yeah, at the car dealership. I'm trying to catch it up, was man. Supposed to be. I didn't even know where we're at. A personally owned vehicle. All right, coming off a hot weekend at Vegas. How you been doing, man? We're a day late and a dollar short, but we're still here, right? Work issues cause of the delay. Yep. Work issues, bathroom issues, some type of issues. But it was something. Diseases. Diseases. <laughs> So today's episode 37, it is unofficially brought to you by a company that's definitely not our sponsor, but it's, how do you say this? Hydralazine. That sounds good. Hydralazine for high blood pressure. Hydralazine is used without other medications to treat high blood pressure. Lowering your blood pressure prevents strokes or heart attacks. It works by relaxing the blood vessels so blood can flow through your body more easily. You didn't say vasodilator. Dude, I, I'm skipping these big words. Hydro- vasodilator. Hydrolazine is called a vasodilator. Huh. huh. Didn't know that. Some of the side effects of hydrolazine are headaches, pounding fast heartbeat, oh, loss of appetite. Should it be slowed down if you're taking it for high blood pressure? Yeah, you would think. You wouldn't have fast pounding heartbeats. But you can lose your appetite, causes nausea and vomiting and diarrhea. You know, I think if you had the diarrhea and vomiting per- first, your nausea would come afterwards and you'd lose your appetite. Ain't nothing worse than vomiting and diarrhea at the same exact time. Have you ever noticed when you vomit, you taste it all day? Yeah. You can't. You it's can't, so nasty. You can't get that out with toothpaste. Ah, that's why dizziness may occur. Yeah. Because you're smelling your vomit all day long. <laughs> yeah. This medication may also cause nerve problems. That's serious. It can cause severe tiredness, aching, swollen joints, rash on nose and cheeks, swollen glands, signs of kidney problems, signs of infection, easy bruising and bleeding. This drug may cause you dizziness. Alcohol and marijuana also can cause you dizziness. A sore throat that doesn't go away. Why the heck would you take this? This is what I don't get. It says this drug may cause you dizziness, period. Then it says alcohol or marijuana can also cause you dizziness. So is it saying that alcohol and marijuana mixed with hydralazine causes dizziness? Or is it just saying that alcohol and marijuana can cause dizziness? So you're about done when you take this. Pretty much. You're you're on death's doorstep. Well, I mean, yeah. If you start passing out or having trouble breathing, you need to call poison control. Or well, it says one. don't do anything that needs alertness until <laughs> you can do it safely. What, so you're drunk safe? That's like saying, I'm not drunk, officer. I'm not drunk. I only had s- 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 seven, three, eight drinks. Two officer. drinks. Two. two. I mean two. I can... A minus six, two. Two. So you could technically be sober, taking hydrolazine, get pulled over, and the officer would think you've been drinking alcohol or smoking marijuana because of your dizziness. Where we, where we live, we're going to get tased and beaten, too. 
<laughs> you see the you see the video when they were still in the goalpost from Neyland Stadium after Tennessee beat Alabama, and the guy's like, "We're taking the goalpost out of here," and you hear Zzz. he goes, "Change of plan. Somebody just got tased." <laughs> <laughs> it's <was> awesome. <laughs> All right, so before we get into the NASCAR stuff, one of the, one of the new things we're bringing to the show are different items. These would actually make good Christmas gifts. They're cheap. You can find them on Amazon. So should first, we put links on our website so we can get a little penny here and there? Nah, no, because we're not. A, we're unofficially, officially, not officially sponsored by these people. They don't even Ooh. know it. Jeez, I need another day off. <laughs> So the first item I found on Amazon is something I knew you would really like, Jamie. It is a roast beef sandwich bath bomb. That is so nasty, dude. <laughs> it says the bath just got delicious. You've had a hunger for relaxation all day. Now you can slip into a delicious new way to enjoy a fresh dip. These cool oh. bath bombs make the best gift for mom or dad. No, it does not. These are great for me time. The taste of freedom. Is beef the taste of freedom? It's American. <laughs> this is a handmade bath. Handmade bath balls are a scrumptious treat for the whole body. Well, we roast, can get rid of the handmade bath. Ro <laughs> roast beef bath bombs are proudly handcrafted in the USA. Get your hands off my balls. These are perfect bath bombs do, to give away. Do not house, eat. Housewarming. Oh, my goodness. These are perfect for housewarming gifts. Can you? I don't know, man. I can't. Ugh. Oh, I can't. Can, do you look at the reviews, dude? So one of the, the one, well, I say one, the only question posed. <laughs> that means these people bought them. I know. This The only question anybody asked was, but does it smell like it or but what does it smell like and it says the giant bath bombs are scented like root beer so root beer doesn't taste like roast beef soda to me well one of the reviews from agent k says not even in the ballpark of a roast beef sandwich this smells like mint leaves well look at that the guy wanted to take a bath with his wife yeah chris oh Posted a give it a one out of five. He, he says, bought it this year. Smells very smells girly. Very disappointing. It does not smell like roast beef or gravy. I'm <laughs> I my wife bought this in hopes of taking a bath that smells like it, but unfortunately, it's just a funny saying on the front. Won't be buying again. The way I imagine this is they're like two morbidly obese people, and they they're were, in the mood. And they want to bathe in roast beef <laughs> before they get it on. Do you throw this bath bomb in the um, hot tub? Oh, <laughs> that's oh! I don't know who in their right mind would buy one of these, other than Agent K and Chris. They did it this year. Yep. Second item we have is the yodeling pickle. It's a musical toy. I think this, from what I was reading, it's about a five to six inch long pickle. You sure this wasn't an adult toy there, Brad? I'm positive. Are you sure? It says electronic yodeling pickle. Yeah. Batteries included. Great, great gift for the person who has everything except a yodeling pickle. But it says right there, is it waterproof? No. It says yodel my EU. It says. What is your EU? I think that's how you say you spell yodelehi who and how you do yodels. Did I do that right? I'm not Switzerland, Swedish, whatever yodelers. You've never heard of yodel? I've heard of yodel. Did I do it right? Yodelehi who? I Is don't that right? know. I have no idea. Janet, are you out there? We're going to need you to help us out. When I went to Switzerland, I didn't see know a single yodel. yodeler. Not a single yodeler. Well, in the ad for the yodel and pickle, it Why says... Why has it got to tell me how long it is? Are you sick and tired of trying to convince a jar of pickles to yodel? <laughs> <laughs> These people are on some serious heroin here. So, one of the questions... <laughs> There's the reviews. One of the questions for the yodel and pickle, it says, Is the pickle dill or bread and butter? I don't want to sound pickleist, but it's a thing to know if the... Something is bread and butter. What's a pickle? What I call a sweet pickle. He said it's pickle neutral. Those are the response. Pickle neutral. 
He says, when I designed the pickle, it was a generic pickle, not any type of pickle in particular. All right, so Amanda McCarthy gave it a one out of five, said it looks cool, but it doesn't work. Was given to my husband for Christmas. He thought it was neat until he opened it and tried to get it to yodel. It sounded like a sick dog underwater. He said he will just keep, keep it in its package because at least it looks neat. Not worth the money for a paperweight. Um, Grandma Geek, right? Am I saying this right? I mean, you're the review expert. Grandma Geek gave it a one out of five. Many years ago, when I was a kid, you could get a musical toy that when you blew on it. Why is she all and, nostalgic? And block different when holes. You blew on it and block different holes? You what would, the hell? You would make yodeling sounds. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> I grew up. I grew up watching old 40s and 50s movies on a big box TV. Many many of these movies had singers doing yodeling. That is what I thought this toy was. So I bought six. Six? She bought six for opening on Christmas. Uh. Unfortunately, this toy only makes one small tune. There's no way to make different sounds. Well, Grandma, when you are blowing and blocking holes, I'm sure you got more than one tune. <laughs> Well, it says she got many different tunes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this She's next. She's very popular, too. This next toy. That's disgusting. Is, is by far my favorite. I actually tweeted this out earlier, a picture. It's called the Squirt Wee P Boy Set by Art Creativity. But look at the picture. They're pissing on each other. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Get the giggles going with the art creativity Wee Pee Boy set. It comes with two boy peeing squirter toys, each standing at 7.5 inches tall. Simply fill the base with water, pull down the shorts for a stream of water and laughter that never grows old. Anyone will love this. They even have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Any issues, they'll make it right. It has a leak-free design. So we're, there's a picture. It's a little girl and a little boy. They're holding the <laughs> squirt wee pee boy small, set up dude. in the air, pulling the pants down, peeing on each other. We need to cancel the person that designed this. This is crazy. Like, I, I'm assuming this is meant as a gag gift, but still. What was that store that was in malls that had these kind of things? Uh, oh. Spencer's. Spencer's, that was it. I guarantee you Spencer's sold the squirt wee pee boy set. I guarantee they did too. So, I was it reading... It doesn't get that horrible to reviews. No, it had like 680 reviews. <laughs> Look, the pants broke off. Yeah. So, one of the questions they were was... were manhandling it? That was grandma. <laughs> it says, does it show a pee pee? No, just a tiny hole where the water squirts out. It's non-gender. Yeah, <laughs> what, well, wouldn't it be little girl? Oh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's not gender neutral. <laughs> so uh, it's it's transgender. Jamie Clark, not my, me, <laughs> gave it a four out of five. My kids thought these were great. I have boys ages six to eight and girls ages ten to eleven. And they were all amused. Unfortunately, the shorts of these weepy boys break off easily. <laughs> if they lose their Sounds shorts, like they want to do more than pee, don't if they? If they lose their shorts, they can't pee anymore. Really? <laughs> That's what it says. Oh, no. It says one broke off on the first day entirely. The second one still has his shorts on and still works. <laughs> Kyle Johnson says one works perfect. The other has a leak. Isn't that the whole purpose is for it to leak? I think so. Ooh. MJ, so I guess Michael Jordan bought some of these for him and Denny. <laughs> he gave it to uh, the drivers. Well, he said it was he, his booby prize. He said he bought it as a gift for Secret Santa. I don't know. Think so, he drew Bubba? Maybe. Maybe they were doing Dirty Santa. So it says the toys pants broke off within the first hour because somebody was Bubba. manhandling it. That was Bubba. I'm glad it came in a set of two. It comes in a set of two so you can wow. pee on each other. Well, that's amazing. I think we should order some of these. We should order them and do a giveaway. They look creepy, dude. Look at the he's. They look he, like um, the he's doughboy. He's happy about peeing on you. Like the Pillsbury doughboy kind of. You need to report abuse. It says help for report abuse. Report abuse. This is this, this is how you abuse children. It's hilarious. Uh, the photo of the kids like, pulling the pants down. Is. 
peeing on each other. It's like, why? At least they have, at least they're in the appropriate, they're in Florida, no, California. Oh, yeah. He's I mean, probably caused cancer in California, actually. Uh, a little boy are peeing on him. Pulling the pants down. Jill. Causes cancer in California. Jill, that little boy just pee on me, Jill. <laughs> oh. All right. So, raced in Vegas this weekend. On the Jeff Gluck poll, was it a good race? 86% said yes, 14% said no. On a scale of 1 to 10, Jamie, was it a good race? What do you give it? I give it a 7, and I think that even the poll is wrong. It's just that we've had such a crappy last few races that an average race is now fantastic. I'll be honest. I thought the race was not as good this race as the spring race there was. But we've had crappy races the last couple, month and a half, so. Well, that's not helping any. No. That I was makes, a, I this was, was a, I, you know, if. It had more action than the other races we've had in the Well, we had playoffs. tire wear off. We had crashing. We had, uh, well, the penalty hasn't been announced as we record this, but. Yeah, we keep checking. But we're getting um, nothing. How about the playoff guys racing for a win? That was nice. Yeah. I mean, I didn't like the fact that Joey won, but at least yeah, we had playoff drivers not. up front. Yeah, all day. I mean, and we during the restarts, you had three, four wide racing for a couple laps, and then you had the high line working for some guys, the low line working for the others. So, I mean, I think we had a little bit of everything in this race as we far as We still had passing on long runs, too. That's what I'm saying. Like, we had... Yeah, it was a good race. You had more than what we've had. Like, the Roval was absolutely... I mean, Horrific. I give it a seven even. I give it a seven point five. I don't know if we're doing halves, but I went with a half because it. I didn't feel like it deserved. Well, an we eight. make the rules, so yeah, we sure. accept halves this week. <laughs> Just this week. Yeah, we won't be doing halves next week. It's every other week. I didn't want to give it a full eight. I didn't feel like it was a a full eight for me. I felt like it was a seven point five. Well, I look at things as my grades when I was in school, and a seven is a seventy. I which, see. Which was average for me. Yeah. I give it a I Heck. give it what I saw in my report cards every quarter. I oh. see. I they I, give it a high B. If I did that, I'd be giving it F's every the week. The world gives it a high B, an eighty six percent. Well, like I said, I think I think Jeff Gluck's poll was skewed in a in a sense too, because the races have been so horrible up until Vegas that People were just happy to see some type yeah. of racing. Wow, we actually saw racing and passing. That's awesome. I mean, we're in – Vegas is probably one of the hottest markets for sports just because of the gambling, the sports betting. I mean, you got the Raiders that moved there from Oakland. So, I would think Vegas – Didn't they have a championship hockey team? I'm not into hockey, but I think so. No, absolutely. Or they lost no in idea. the championship something. Vegas seems too hot for hockey. But Florida has a hockey team, too, so I guess you can't base it on Yeah, but location. everybody from up north, they end up retiring in the south. You know, hockey in Florida is similar to Jamaica having a bobsled team. Yeah, exactly. It just makes absolutely zero sense. But you know they have— Because where in Jamaica do you practice bobsledding other have, than they cool runnings? They mountains. They just didn't have snow on them. Yeah, they had dirt. You saw cool runnings. Yeah. So do they still practice like that in a boxcar? No, I think now they go to England. Oh, they send the Aren't Jamaicans. They a, a Dominion of England, Jamaica. I think so. <laughs> I think they go to England. Our geography is just as bad as our math and our English, so and our science. Well, I'm pretty sure they're a Dominion. Let's Google it. Let's look. Or do they have total autonomy? That's a nice word. Autonomy. Is that your word of the day? What is the word of the day? Autonomy. Was it? Yeah. Actually, it's a different word, but. It didn't work out for me. <laughs> <laughs> that was yesterday's word. We're going to just roll with it. Let's see. Jamaica. I can't spell Jamaica. I did Jane-Naka. <laughs> it's J. Porn star. Jamaica. J-A-M-A-C-A. Jamaica. I had, is that how you spell it? J-A-M-A-C-A? J-A-M-A-I-C-A. Um, nowhere in there is it jamaica I. So to make up. it was captured by England in 1655. Did they give it back? 
It was a British colony. They granted independence in 1962, so they're no longer British or English. What do you call the British? UKers? English? You got Scot well, Scottish, which is America 2.0. Part of the UK. Britain? I don't know. Britannica always confused me. Well, it had you Britain called, and America in it. Britannica. You, you would call the British the Britons the Britishes. And the uh, Britishes? That's a group of Britons, <laughs> isn't it? The Britishes? It's three that's two or more, right? Yeah. The Britishes. The Britishes. What about London? Londoners? Hey, my great 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 something was the mayor of London. Remember? Lord Lord Carden. Yeah, William. Lord William Carden was yeah. the mayor of London in the 1800s. He was also the sheriff of London in the 1800s. Is that kind of like the sheriff of Nottingham on Robin Hood? Maybe. I think he was mayor, sheriff, then went back to mayor because they didn't have anybody better. So they went with a Carden. Maybe. I don't know. Was, Lord. He, was he into air conditioning then? Uh, it would have been what would have been then? Would have been... Uh, fans. <laughs> hand <laughs> hand fans. Your servants. Fanning you? Yeah. Open the window. Turn your, the air on. Your surfs. I think opening the window was equivalent to turning the air on back then. Well, maybe he designed homes for airflow. Well, no, he was a sheriff and a mayor. And he mayor... He be a jack of all trades back then. What do mayors actually do? Anything? I think they tell other people what to do. Right. They're in charge. Oh, they're delegators. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I can Man, get down with that. They're upper management for the government system. I want to be lower management, right? The governor is the mayor, then the governor. I'd like to work on the road crew for my county. They never do anything. We were coming down the street the other day at the road crew for our county. The guy supposed to hold the stop sign. He's laying in the back of the truck talking on the phone. Wow. It seems safe, right? That's how you get an accident. Well, what do you think? If your job is to hold the sign and go stop to slow, and you go on lunch break, wouldn't you think you would have a fill-in? I would think so. I mean, I've noticed with my county's road crew, there's a guy in the backhoe, three or four supervisors discussing what the guy in the backhoe's doing. Then there's two guys with the stupid paddle, stop, go. Yeah. So I want to be one of those three guys just having a little powwow. Hey, they make decent money, too. I looked into it at one time. I was When I was doing heating and air installs, I looked into being a stop sign turner. Because it's a high-paying job because it's a high-risk job. So they, Why? People won't pay attention to your paddle? People might hit you. You're standing in the middle of the road. I, I mean, wanted to hit, a, hit them a couple of times. You, I've had them turn around to go, and then cars are still coming. Like That's the problem right now it, with driving. Like Nobody knows how to drive. They can't stop looking at their dang cell phone long enough to drive. Like I've seen some of the dumbest things ever on the road here recently, and every single one of them, is looking at their cell phone. Well, I have a story about that. There was a guy in a white Mercedes texting yesterday, going real slow. But that's all I can tell you. My attorney advised me there's six months, and I can still get a ticket. Really? Yeah. Well, you have an attorney on, like, retainer? I'm related. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, Chuck? Oh, uh, right. Homer. Homer? That's Man. who I call this time. Chuck's not that kind of attorney. Yeah, hey, I'm not sure. He listens. Let's be nice. Thanks. Chuck. Thanks for listening, Chuck. We love Chuck. Yeah. Up, oh, Chuck. He's given us some great legal advice. <laughs> well, maybe. We don't know. <laughs> we haven't been sued yet. I don't know if it was so, great. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. worked. We haven't been sued yet. Thanks, Chuck. Yeah. All right. Xfinity race. Haley Deegan runs her first Xfinity race and finishes 13th. She did pretty good. If they don't put her in an Xfinity car next season, they are really missing the boat. Like the truck series. What is, team do you think would put her in? She needs team. good equipment, though. She does. Well, it wasn't bad equipment. She was in Saturday. I mean, she came home 13th. So, but you got to get her out of the truck series. That's where I'm getting at. Like the truck series is a cesspool for wrecking. There's no these the cars are harder to drive than the trucks and that's where Haley was excelling at because you gave her a challenge. Well, it is a crash derby every week on the truck series. I think I think Haley needs to be moved up. Let's give her two years in the Xfinity. Let them figure out how to make race cars in the Cup Series again. Once we get another race, well, we had a couple of drivers go up from Xfinity to Cup. Are those seats all gone? 
Oh yeah, they filled them already. I really would like to have seen Haley go to JRM, but she's she's married to Ford right now. I think JRM would have given her the best chance to win, and maybe she does. Maybe she moves up to a a mid tier team in the Xfinity Series next year. Maybe she can go drive for Brandon Brown. Since Brandon Brown's not going to drive for Brandon Brown Motorsports anymore, or built for Brandon Motorsport or Brandon built Motorsports, whatever, whatever the heck it it's is. called, it was made for him. Did he once say it wasn't his? Well, he says his dad. Owns his dad owns. That's why it's called Brandon built Motorsports. Because his dad for built it for Brandon. Yeah. Except they're letting Chris Wrong drive right now. Is his dad a billionaire? I mean, where did the money come from? No, that's why they're letting that other kid that wrecks every week drive, Chris Wright. Or Chris Ross. Because he can pay for the ride? Yep. His daddy's got more money than Brandon's daddy. Hmm. I think that's what NASCAR's becoming. Whose daddy has the most money? Who's your daddy? Is that what they asked in the interview? Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? <laughs> can we see your daddy's bank account? <laughs> yeah. Do you have his last statement from his investments? So during the Xfinity race, at the beginning of the race, Trevor Bain gets sideways, almost spins out, but he saves it. Then during the long flat green flag run we had, Brandon Jones also gets loose and gets sideways and saves it. But this time, NASCAR throws out a caution. I think they threw out that caution because we were having a long green flag run. Dell Jr. even said on the broadcast, I'm not sure about that one. Seemed a little quick on the button for me. Boy, everybody's jumping down NASCAR's throat now, aren't they? Everybody's been jumping down NASCAR's throat for weeks now. But I've got something. NASCAR can't get out of their own way. We're talking about how great the Francis are, Bill and Bill Jr. It's like farting into a fan. It blows right back in your face. And that's how NASCAR's acted the last couple of weeks. It's just, so, it's kind of like peeing in the wind. You don't do it? You ever heard? I've done it. It's, it works for you. It's the guy next to you. It doesn't work for well, The problem is I was trying to hit. I like to aim at things when I go to the bathroom. So you're aiming at the wind? <laughs> well, I was aiming for something way up on a tree, and it, it blew it. I peed on myself, on my face. That's why horrible. You, is that why your wife put curtains up in front of the window, in front of the toilet, so you would quit trying to pee out the window? Yeah. I like peeing outside. I do, too. You don't have to aim as much. It's more manly. But you, don't, you don't have to worry about peeing on the seat when you pee outside. Here's a controversy people don't talk about. The very first Daytona was checker flagged for Johnny Beauchamp. Yeah. He didn't win the race. That's because he wasn't the first one across the line. It took him a while to tell him, though. That was before TV. That was before video. I mean, there was like... What a controversy, though. Three cameras. Wasn't it like three days later? Who won that race, do you know? Let's look. I think it was Lee Petty. I think it was too. If I'm not mistaken. But that's just wrong, dude. The 1961 Daytona 500. Well, I would rather them get it right than wrong. And back then, they didn't have the access like we do now, which I think is the problem. The overall problem is the access. I mean, just think about it this way. Everything going on with NASCAR, safety-related, Business side related, the teams are mad, the drivers are mad, NASCAR is mad, tracks are mad. Everybody's jockeying for money on the new TV deal, right? This isn't nothing new. This has happened before. We had the manufacturer wars, the tire wars. We had guys going on strike. When Richard Petty left the sport and went and raced drag cars for a year. It's because they wouldn't let him have his Hemi. So... What I'm saying is all the crap that's currently going on is nothing new. The only new part is our access. We I mean, also had down a rabbit hole. I went down it over the weekend. Johnny Beauchamp is the only NASCAR driver who says he saw a UFO and peeked in the portals and saw aliens. He saw aliens. Aliens, dude. He saw a UFO land in Iowa like 1947. During the race? He and his buddy out in the woods. During a the race? They went. No, it wasn't during a race. NASCAR wasn't formed yet. So saw, a U- saw a UFO. Land. You believe him? And he went out and looked in the portals and saw aliens. The portals. Portals. Windows. Whatever Port- you want to call port-holes. it. Portholes. Porta Johns. Portholes. Not portals. Portals. Portals is something you travel through to go to another world. 
Porthole. Porthole. That's just me saying it quick. Portal. Portal. Sounds like Portal. Me. You're saying it like I would pronounce My it. My dad was Portal. in the Navy. That's how he said it. Portal. Portal. Get out of that portal, boy. And then he, you'd hear him. I'm slapping you. Did you not listen? I said porthole, boy. Why don't you let me answer, Dad, before you smack me? All right, Kyle, Kurt Busch, Saturday, made an announcement that he will be retiring from full-time racing, not because he wants to, but because he has to. Kurt is still suffering injuries from this concussion, this ultra-safe next-gen car we have. He didn't look confused when I saw him in the interview. He looked sad. He didn't look concussed. Yeah, he looked heartbroken. Of course, I don't know what concussed looks like. I don't think concussed has a look. I think maybe. Maybe you can Does see it. Does it mean your pupils are really big? No. I don't know that you can necessarily look at somebody and Do tell you them have, like, concussed. Alzheimer's for a little bit? You ever had a concussion? Yes. Did you did you look like you had a concussion? I didn't notice any <laughs> <laughs> Nobody did? No, except for I was wandering around in circles. <laughs> the doctor said, his thoughts are going to come slower. And your wife goes, no, no, <laughs> no can't get any slower. <laughs> wasn't married yet. Yeah, my last concussion, I was single, so. I got run over by a car. Did you? Uh-huh. I hit my head on a dirt bike. They had to release fluid buildup in my head. Oh, I mine wasn't that bad. And I missed a semester of school. Maybe that's what's wrong with me today. All my concussions from playing Little League football. and We used to get concussed every Saturday. You get hit in the head and you say, oh, hey, coach, I can't think. Yeah, well, I got concussed playing football, too. That hurt. Like seeing stars. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was just called getting just your... blacked out. Like, called getting oh. your bell rung. How many times did your coach say, oh, he just got his bell rung? Then they grab your face mask and, and jerk shake your head it around. violently. You okay? <laughs> yeah. And that never seemed to help. I remember being on the sideline throwing up after a hit. Heck, in practice, I got knocked out cold in practice, throwing up, and then still practice. Oh, nothing of it. Didn't go see a doctor for Get it. Get a sip of water, boy. I remember hitting the <laughs> You'll ground be okay. head first with my helmet on, and still, when I stood up, my eyes closed and I collapsed. And you probably... And I just sat out for one play. Yeah, I was about to say, you probably <laughs> sat out for one play. Go sit over there till you stop spinning, boy. Alex Bowman's announced that he won't be back till possibly Phoenix. And he is also sidelined from a concussion that he stained at, sustained at Texas in this ultra-safe next-gen car. I think I'm going to just start calling it the ultra-safe next-gen car. I don't know why. USNG. Did you listen to the download Which last, last week with Ben Kennedy? It's horrible. It's the worst Dell Jr. download He's to got, date. He knows how to drop all the buzzwords, though, Dude, doesn't he? That is Mr. Corporate America. Uh -huh. He's Mr. PC Corporate America. If he was a superhero, he would be Corporate America. Uh-huh. 100%. Like it, to the point where it was annoying. Yeah, it was it many took, buzzwords. It took me like four days to get through the whole episode, and I was honestly mad that I even finished it. I was like, why, dude? Like, why have Ben Kennedy on there if he's not going to be straight up? I don't want to hear you come give me the corporate mumbo jump. If I want the corporate mumbo jumbo, I'll turn on Sirius XM NASCAR I radio. see it before or after a race. Yeah, I'll listen to Dave Moody give me the corporate mumbo jumbo because he's going to toe the line. He's He uses the same buzzwords as what Ben Kennedy. What happened to the France family? After senior and junior, they got all wacky. Well, I mean, he, Brian turned into a wackadoodle with all the cocaine. and Teed that up good for you, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was your week. <laughs> yeah, Brian France had all his cocaine and he, alcohol Jeremy, issues, and him and Jeremy were doing trading, meth together. Trading different colors of meth. You see Jeremy Mayfield tweeted about Bubba Wallace, and he said, oh, and they call me the dangerous one. <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny. All right, Tyler Reddick. Could we have a rehab race? That? Well, who would race in it? No, no. We actually we get all these ex-drivers that went to rehab for drugs and alcohol. Yeah, but how many do and you And then really we have? give them drugs and alcohol, and, and we them send them out on the track. <laughs> what do we call that? It's kind of like the all-star race, but we'll call it the washed-up race. <laughs> the all-crackhead race. All-crackhead race. Yeah. We'll have keg, you know, kegs of 
whiskey and do it. vodka. You got to do like a keg stand. And well, you then, do it in Colombia, South America. To make it safe, we'll use like those little bandoleros on the one yeah. and a half mile track. That would probably be, if you put those bandoleros on the one and a half mile track, it'd take them 20 minutes to go around it once, but. Well, I don't think that most of them would see a whole laugh. Probably not. No. <laughs> Jeremy. Jeremy, you're not even in your car. Wrong way. <laughs> Jeremy Mayfield standing there scratching like, I can't get in the car yet. I'm itching. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Stop grinding your teeth and get in the car, Jeremy. <laughs> so Tyler Reddick has announced after Kyle Bush announced, or Kurt Bush announced that he will be retiring. Tyler Reddick will be going to the 45 a year earlier. Honestly, man, did you really think Tyler was ever going to stay in a third car RCR? I think as soon as Richard Childress said, look, he's going to drive the eight. We're going to fund you. We're going to get a charter for you. He said, liar, liar, the pants on fire. Yeah. I don't think there was ever any intention of Richard yeah. putting putting him in a car. It's probably like a week later, Richard's like, will you leave for this amount of money? Probably. You yeah. think he paid him off? I don't think there was any money switched hands. I think it was just. You don't think so? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe 2311 had to buy him out of that contract. but I'd I mean, do you want to waste a year to prove to the world that Richard Childress is a liar? Well, you're just going to prove he was just being a butt. I mean, it, that was all well, Richard was going to do is be a butthead right back to Tyler. Ty, he, Richard was mad that Tyler announced he was leaving midseason. An hour after he was told. Yeah. Well, which is Which is bad because it's – it's well, Richard's Richard, fault. Richard could have signed him. Let's let's get let's start at the beginning of the story. He could have Tyler a, goes to Richard, asks for a multi year deal. Richard says no. Tyler goes to Denny. Denny offers him multi year deal. Tyler says yes. Richard gets mad because Richard made a Richard mistake. mistake. This is a typical Richard Childress thing to do. And he did it. He did it with he was Harvick too. Catering to his grandkids has about killed RCR. Thankfully, Austin sees his inheritance going up in smoke, so he's like, wait, whoa, whoa, pop, pop. We need to start making good decisions so I have a race team to run because my racing career will probably end soon. But do you sign the Kyle Busch that's going to win one a year? I think Kyle can do more than one a year. You think? Not with RCR equipment, but... I don't think he can do it with RCR either. I think with RCR, he will make... I don't know, man. Tyler Reddick has done a lot more with RCR equipment than we expected him He's to be. He's done able more to do. with it than anyone since Harvick. So I think if if Reddick can do it, I don't see why Ty, uh, Kyle can't do it. Kyle's not 26. No, but he's not old. Kyle's 38. I think Kyle, I mean, Harry Gant was how old when he started racing? I know things yeah, have changed. but that was back in the day. You didn't start in the cup until you were in your 30s. All right. I don't know. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. What elephant? Bubba Wallace and Kyle Larson. Ooh, you went there? So, let's just break down the facts. Bubba Wallace, Kyle Larson racing hard. Kyle Larson washed him up the track. There's no denying it. I don't see anything wrong with what Kyle did. That's hard racing. These cars are extremely hard to pass in. The hook, I don't see. I don't have a problem with the hook. So Larson pushes Bubba into the wall. Bubba, his steering miraculously broke, and his car all of a sudden gassed up and turns left, right hooking Larson sending him into Christopher Bell. If he would have missed Christopher Bell, he would have hit the wall with the rear end exactly like the other concussed drivers have hit the wall. Then, Still don't have a problem with it. Then Bubba jumps out on a hot track. Got a problem with that. NASCAR comes over the spotter's radio, says pedestrian walking across the track, <laughs> which, which means heck. Bubba Wallace is walking across the track. He walks 100 yards that's 100 yards to any walk. He didn't run it. He didn't jog it. He walked it. That's 100 yards to cool down. Think about what you're about to go do. He walks up to Larson, drops his helmet, and starts pushing Larson. He basically body slammed him into Larson's oh, yeah. car. That was a hard push, the first one. But I have a problem with that, too, because you're more than even after you hook Larson. You should be done. I think he should not have touched Larson on the track. I don't have a problem with him. 
I don't like the fact that he the altercation happened in the infield. I don't think it was necessary. Obviously, when Larson, you push Larson once, okay, he doesn't push you back. Heck, maybe even go after him a second time, but a third, a fourth, a fifth. If Larson doesn't come back at you, it's over, dude. You look like a bully now pushing this guy. And look, no offense, Bubba is taller and weighs more than Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson's like four foot three and a hundred pounds soaking wet. Maybe with the driver's suit on and the helmet, he's 120 pounds. Bubba, I'm just going to say, has probably got 50 pounds on Larson. Oh, and I think it, he might have more than that. And but... at least six inches taller than Larson. So Larson looked like a terrified little kid getting picked on by Bubba. Now, Larson did the right thing by not yes, getting into it. He did not engage. And I think that is. And I think that's why Bubba. Actually. Bubba getting out of his car in the middle of the track is the reason he should be suspended. So you think stupidity is the suspension? Okay. You think he, how many race suspension? One, two, three, One. four. I think because as you've seen on the video with Tony Stewart and his little midget, yeah, that's how you die. Exactly. So my biggest issue. My biggest issue actually is the, is the problem you have no issue with. My biggest issue is Bubba getting mad and left hooking him. Now, if Bubba, if his steering truly broke and he went left and hit him, because that's happened this season. We've seen toe links break and drivers can't save these cars and they hook left. It did not look like what happened to Bubba, but I might, I'm might. i waiting on NASCAR to give me all the facts. I want the data. I have a problem with him retaliating at 180 miles an hour when the day before we had a guy step away because he got hurt in the car. We have two drivers currently out with concussions. All we've talked about for six I weeks completely is disagree. issues. I completely disagree. I don't get it. How can you disagree with that? Larson was driving on the edge when he lost it and ran him up into the wall. But he didn't intentionally take Bubba out. Bubba could have kept going. Well, Bubba Josh, didn't say he intentionally took out Larson. You don't have to say it. When you turn <laughs> left and throttle up, that's intentional, right? <laughs> but he didn't say it. He could say he was looking at his gauges, like Dell Jr. said <laughs> from William Byron. I mean, I can only tell you how I was raised. Punch me in the face, put him on the ground. That's what not. he did. I still Respond disagree. Respond with more force. I would rather... He responded with more force. In the future, do you think Larson, at the very least, won't have a second thought when the same situation comes up and Bubba's sitting there? I don't know. I mean, really, any one of them could took, can take their foot off the accelerator. Same, any one of them. The same thing happened in Saturday's race when Josh Berry got run high, bounced off the wall, and won the dang race. So Bubba's day wasn't over. Neither was Larson's. Those no, cars could have finished the race. They could have both kept racing. Bubba, Bubba got mad. Bubba effed them both up. Bubba got mad, hooked left, and took both of them. I up. have a problem with Bubba's temper, too. If you're going to wreck somebody, learn how to wreck them without wrecking yourself. Well, he could have done it a little further. In the, he could have just... He could have made. He could have done a less dramatic turn into the rear fender, and Bubba could have kept racing. Bubba could have pushed... Larson into turn one with too much speed. Bubba just, could have made the turn. Larson would have hit the wall. And I would have been all right with that. I don't have a problem with him retaliating. Like I said, you have a once, problem with the fight though. I have a problem with him getting out of this car on the track too. Yeah. Okay. He's so, supposed to wait till the ambulance gets there, drop his window net and then go to the end. The other problem I have with, he didn't listen to officials. He walked to the infield care center. You have a problem with him pushing the official's hand away? He probably should have done that. I mean, it's not a big deal. I don't think but it's a, unless the official's crying, broke a wrist or something, which I highly doubt. Like, if you this let, is my problem. The official put his hand on Bubba first. You touch me, you're you're asking for it. At that point, like I said, it's not it's a big open deal. Season. It's not a big deal to me. Exactly. I think my biggest problem is he can't control his anger. Can't control the, uh, most of these drivers can't control their temper though. Well, but he he could have done it, as we've already said. He could have been a lot more smart about the way he got revenge. And not wrecked himself. 
pretty stupid. And took out a teammate or took a Toyota out, teammate yeah, at least. Took out another Toyota who's in the playoffs. You got Bubba apologizing to Chris Bell. Like, I'm sorry I took you I out. I think that apology is an empty apology. Well, then you got Larson thanking Christopher Bell for block, stopping him from hitting the wall rear first. But Joey Logano said that could have ended Kyle Larson's career. That to me, that was on the line, or it could end. But his doing life. a lap at 180 could just end your career too. So wrecking at 180 could end your career, yeah. But Joey thought there's no room for that. Said you can't do that in NASCAR in a serious XM interview today. Which I think is kind of comical because Joey's cost how many wrecks at super speedways for aggressive blocking? Oh no, he's the same. They've all that's the thing. Kyle Larson got out of the car and said it. We've all done it. I mean, Ty Gibbs did it on Pit Road and got yeah. a seventy five thousand dollar penalty. So I would expect Bubba to get a hundred thousand dollar penalty, a hundred owner points taken away for the on track altercation. Well look at Tony Stewart. I expect Bubba Wallace to get ex or I about said expended. Well, he, get he suspended. Ex- get suspended for one race for walking across a live track. I, I, I agree with that. Nothing from the fight. Zero. I don't think anger management, I don't think anything. I don't think anything comes of the fight. But all of that was from his stupidity. His inability to control his anger. He was even, he was past even when he wrecked them. Well, Bubba Wallace did put out an apology. Yeah, um, it was kind of half ass. Yeah, I mean, so here's the thing. He opens his apology with, I want to apologize for my actions on Sunday following the on-track incident with Kyle Larson in the number five car. To me, that is basically admitting that he did something wrong with the five car. He's not really apologizing because look at the next paragraph. My behavior does not align with the core values that are shared by 2311 Racing and our partners who have placed a crucial role in my incredible journey to the top of this great sport. So he's apologizing not because he feels bad for what he did. He's apologizing because their partners Michael Jordan and Denny said, dude, what the hell are you thinking? Dennis probably went, Daryl. We don't need this kind of racing. <laughs> Isn't that Bubba's real name, Daryl? Yeah. Yeah. So I could see Dennis going, Dennis sitting Daryl down at the kitchen table. Well, that would have happened yesterday, right? Yeah. He's like, Daryl. Daryl, this is a problem here, son. What the? Uh, we can't be doing heck this. What are you doing? You wrecked a $300,000 car and took out a Toyota team. Then you stood in the middle of the racetrack when cars are going past you. But he did apologize to NASCAR and the race fans, along with Christopher Bell, Joe Gibbs Racing, and Toyota for putting them in a situation in the playoffs that they do not deserve. Do you see? See, here's the thing. He He doesn't really apologize for Kyle Larson. No, because he says, I compete with immense passion and with a passion and with passion at times comes frustration. Upon reflection, I should have represented our partners and core team values better than I did by letting my frustration follow me outside of the car. You live and learn, and I intend to learn from this. I love his signature with, like, the rock on thing. I think that's cool. But I like – he – well, so I originally read this as basically admitting he made a mistake on track, but he points out very clearly that he should have represented their teams better – Outside so not, of the car, so he never embarrassed for him. He's not embarrassed for himself. Well, he doesn't. And think he, he didn't really wrong. apologize. This isn't an apology. I'm no, sorry. this is it's not. Like this sorry. is this is Michael Jordan holding a gun to your head. I know you haven't listened, but on DBC they said that basically he needs to get out ahead of this. You know, he needs to he got he needs to shut this down immediately. So, I think NASCAR, whatever penalty they're going to release tonight, because, you know, God forbid they do it during the day when the media can talk about it. Let's wait till everybody goes to bed and secretly. Let's wait till all the podcasters are done podcasting. I think what NASCAR is doing is they're hoping to release it while everybody's in bed. That way it'll be old news by tomorrow. Maybe. I don't know. Well, we haven't gotten a leak yet. We usually get leaks. Something NASCAR is going to do something. If anything, it'll be a, a monetary and a points fine. Well, John F. Kennedy, Ben Ben F. Kennedy, yeah, he's gonna get his fingers on it, and it's gonna say all kinds of politically correct thing. It's completely unrelated. 
I think we appreciate Bubba and his gender neutral let's, colors on his car. Let's talk about the penalties of dollar value penalties and points. Points penalties matter if you're racing for a championship. But when you're making, and I don't know what Bubba makes, let's say you're making, let's say $1 million. 200000 can be a little bit of hurt. But when the team probably pays for it? It doesn't do anything. Exactly. That's why a race suspension would be the biggest punishment they could give Bubba. Because as he says, he loves racing, the journey of the top of this great sport. Well, let's let's cancel the journey one race, and let's see if he really is apologetic after he's not in the car. Yeah, I'm good with that. Tony Stewart sent out a tweet yesterday. It said, for the moment, I actually thought this tweet was true. This didn't come from me, though. So somebody posted a tweet. It said, breaking after further review of the Bubba Wallace Kyle Larson incident, NASCAR has elected to fine Rodney Children's $100,000 and take Kevin Harvick's birthday away. I think they are responsible. I think they are, too. Tony, uh-huh. so what that tells me, though, is Tony pays the fines for his drivers. So Tony has been hit with $200,000 well, in Can Tony take away birthdays? Does he have that authority? Tony didn't take away the birthday. NASCAR did. NASCAR has that authority. I guess if you're driving on their tracks, yeah, why yeah. not? So they've taken Kevin Hart, which Kevin's getting old. Er. So he okay. probably don't mind. I agree with that punishment. Too. Let's suspend Harvick one race for, for Bubba actions. wrecking Larson. I think we suspend Harvick one race and fire Cody Ware. I like Cody personally, though. I, 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 I'm just saying, I think it's a fair penalty. I mean, we got to keep the clown I'm show gonna going somehow. I'm going to get upset if you mess with Cody. Corey what if LaJoy, they do nothing? What if NASCAR does nothing? McCloyd, who pronounced it McLeod. I love, I love BJ McLeod, dude. He's awesome. All three of them are cool. So, Corey LaJoy's got a new teammate next year. Did you see that? Yeah. It's going to be Mr. Happy. If you've looked at the announcement, it has Ty Dillon with this face of, oh, my God, my life sucks and I hate everything. But it says, I'm really excited for the 2023 and this great opportunity with Spire Motorsports. And then it has Ty Dillon sitting there behind her microphone like he just pooped his pants. But let's talk about this for a second. I know I listened to Corey LaJoy stacking pennies. He complains about having inferior equipment, but he is with Spires. What does he expect? Yeah. But Corey has had some great finishes this year. Ty hasn't. Well, Ty's Ty. Ty's in better equipment currently than he's going to be in next year. Do you not think Petty GMS? Is Ty, playing? did you notice at RCR Museum there's like one little thing yeah, representing Ty? Yeah, his, his baby blanket, right? Yeah. It's from when he was born. That's, mm-hmm. I think Pop Pop forgot all about Ty. I don't think Pop Pop shows favoritism. One grandson's in the three, and the other one's in the 77 at Spire. Let's not forget <laughs> their father also works for Pop Pop. So Pops and Pop Pop are not looking out for little Ty Ty. Well, I think they are because is it Spire? And they get their equipment from Mars And Petty GMS. Yeah. So they keep putting Ty in affiliate cars that he'll keep tearing up. So they have to get new cars from RCR. So really, well, good business. Decision. It's a great business model. Well, you know, we heard. Ty's pro- look at him. He's just sitting there with that look on his face. Of he's looking at his grandfather, saying, "Damn it, I'm tired of taking these hits." Pop, pop. 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 Do you know what the new car's like? Pop, pop. It hurts. <laughs> He's concussed in the picture. <laughs> so Gene Haas came out this weekend on on pit road. I think he told Jenna Fryer this on pit road, but he says that the decision for the 41 car next season has not been made. Oh, Tony's leaving NASCAR, dude. Gene says he wants to keep Cole Custer in the 41 car, but Tony wants to put Ryan Priest in the 41 car. What do you think? Who gets the 41 car? I think it's going to be Cole Custer. I I think Tony's going to just finally say, screw it. I don't think he will. He's making money off. Nah. I think Tony will be less active at the track. Because he's tired of dealing with the BS. He's I having mean, fun cruising around with his wife, funny the, car wife. Yeah. Well, I would, I would rather hang out with my newlywed wife too than I'd rather hang the track out with my with wife. Haas. Married to for decades, no than, doubt. Then hang out with old man Gene Haas at the yeah. racetrack and all the other old men at the racetrack. 
So you, you think- I think it sucks though. Like obviously we know from past experience, Gene Haas makes the decisions on that forty one. Gene Haas put Kurt in that car and paid and, for it. And Tony didn't want Kurt. No. He put Cole in that car and paid but for Gene it. But Gene Haas owns a billion dollar business away from NASCAR. Yeah. So Gene Haas can afford to put Cole Custer in that car next season where well, Tony can't afford to put Ryan Priest right. in it. Well, how's Tony going to sponsor it? Now, I think Ryan Priest would do better than Cole Custer. I think so, too. I mean, Cole. But his, Cole's daddy works for Gene Haas. At Haas CNC. So Cole's not I think going he's nowhere. President. Yeah. Cole ain't going nowhere. I, I don't know. think. I was a Cole Custer fan when he drove for Dell Jr. in a truck that year when he tackled John Hunter Nemechek on the straightaway. He, got, he made it to Cup too soon. I think he'd be a better driver if he spent another year in truck and maybe another two years in Xfinity. I don't know. I honestly don't know about that anymore with the new car. I really thought this new car would have put Cole where he needed to be. Well, well put Briscoe where he needs to be. So, a lot of talk's been made the last day or so about the fight with Bubba and is NASCAR going to do anything? And I'm assuming you saw where Las Vegas Motor Speedway ran a full page ad in the paper that says, But mom, he shoved me round two, March 2023. And it's got a picture of the wreck, them wrecking and Bubba pushing Larson. So NASCAR also put this tweet out, or a tweet very similar to this, moments after it happened, and then deleted the tweet. You would think NASCAR Twitter would learn, like, maybe if they're going to get penalized, we shouldn't use this publicity. But NASCAR has been using fighting and wrecking as publicity since, I don't know, day one? Well, 75 years? Look. I know there's a group of purist fans who love the racing and hate the wrecking. That's like 3% of our sport. Other people want to see the beating and banging. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. But no, I don't, I don't want to see anyone get hurt. But I don't like, want to watch a follow the leader. That's why I don't have a problem with what Larson did. No, I don't I don't have a problem with what he did or with what <laughs> Bubba did. Yeah, yeah. We know. I don't care. You should. Keep it up. You should care. What, happen- what I really think happens. What happens if Larson no, comes out tomorrow and says he has a concussion? For a lap. Watch the two for a lap. Larson got a run. Yeah. A and hell of a run. On Harvick. On and Harvick Bubba. and Bubba. And he just didn't have enough room to make he it. Could not clear Bubba in the turn. He, wait, he ran out, out of ability. The law of physics. One of them should, effect and one of them up the lane to where he did not even touch Bubba. Bubba overreacted. Yes. He should not have grabbed that wheel and turned right that hard. That's why Bubba hit the wall. Correct. But but Bubba should Larson said, have lifted. I'm t- and this is just me making it up. <laughs> Bubba in his head said, That son of a bitch ain't ever doing that to me again. And hooks him left. And hooks him left. And spins them out. And that's a problem, though. You can't use the car as a weapon. Now, like I said, this has been going on since day one. I'm okay with it. How many times have we... And I'm not a... I like Bubba. I did not like him yesterday. And he's done some things where I'm like, what the hell's wrong with that guy? I'm not a fan. I'm indifferent, which is probably worse than me not liking you. Like, I can't stand Joey. I can't stand Joey Logano. Oh. To see him win yesterday just really no, ruined the whole race for me. It just pisses me off. I mean, I gave it a 7.5. I'd have probably given it an 8 or a 9 if Joey wouldn't have won. And you know who I won? almost voted no on the Gluck poll because Joey won. I just, I cannot stand just seeing to see Joey, Joey win. seeing Joey pisses me off. But you know who else did that? Who? Rusty Wallace. Rusty made you mad like that? Uh-huh. I just hated him. I was a Rusty fan when he drove the Kodiak 27 when I was a little kid. That was like my first driver I ever pulled for was Rusty. I like that simple white twenty green 27 with the Kodiak logo on the hood. Loved it, man. I thought it was so cool. And I became a Rusty fan. And See, then I became a senior fan right after that. My problem with Rusty was, was he was always playing second fiddle to Dale Jr. And he was trying too I mean, hard. Senior. senior. He's probably junior too. <laughs> but he was trying too hard to be yeah, senior. The Intimidator. 
And he just was like that goofy guy that's trying to hang out with your friends that just doesn't belong. I think their their own track altercations and their off track altercations could be kind of confusing too. But we don't see their off track. But that's what I'm saying. That like kind of takes me back to where I started on this whole deal. We don't see their off track because they didn't have social media. No. Now man. we see all this crap. We see it immediately because of social media. Instagram, Twitter, Twitter, Facebook, Parlor. They ought to start. I don't even know what Parlor is. I don't know. Kanye West just bought it. Truth Social. What's that? I don't know. Which one did Trump make? I think it's Truth Social. Or is that Parlor? I can't remember. Kanye West just bought one of them. I saw it on Twitter. That's because he got banned from everything, too. So he had to go buy his own? Yeah. All right. He hates his own people. So NASCAR announced that they will be bringing rain tires to short tracks starting as soon as next season. Are they going to make them have windshield wipers too? Like I think it's just, I think it's dumb. Oh no! I, I think they should race regardless of the weather. I do except too. for lightning. I do too. Just throw rain like tires on let them go. I just think it's. I think we could have figured out like Bristol, for example. I think they can put a cover over Bristol, leave the middle open, so when it rains, the rain goes to the infield only, but it it covers the track, covers yeah. the stands, and covers the track. Bristol. So instead well, you of saw it on that Russell Crowe movie, it has Gladiator. to be cheaper. Remember, the Romans would pull yes that shade over everything but the center of the Colosseum. So why can't we do that? I mean, that was the Romans. This maybe, is 2023, 2022. Maybe we should get Russell Crowe a job at NASCAR. How much money you think they invested in these rain tires? Wouldn't it have been cheaper to throw up a tarp? Probably. I mean, we got tarps are already invented. Holes have already been invented to hold the tarp up. You can go to Tractor Supply and get those blue ones pretty cheap. I covered the camper with a 30 by 20 tarp this weekend. Mm -hmm. So you can you could buy like 10 of those and cover Bristol. And bungee cords. That's, That's it. That's all you need. You could hook them to you the top row of the stairs. You can make a frame out of two inch PVC. And fill and it with bungee water. cords. I'm telling you, it would have to be cheaper to do that than to make a rain tire. I would be mad if I went to a race and it rained and they kept racing on rain tires and they had nowhere dry for me to sit and watch the race. So what you've done is basically create a tire for TV. Therefore, the own in-person stuff does what not matter. What does that tell you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's my We don't problem. care how many butts are in the seats. No, and that's why the pro with the product NASCAR is currently putting on the track this season, it's probably good that not a lot of people are going. Because it would just run them off. Talladega was horrible. When do you think NASCAR peaked? 2005? Two. Two? 2002, 2003. It's been downhill since. I mean, you used to not be able to get tickets to any race, except for Atlanta. Bristol, you basically had to die. You had to be on a waiting list. You could put Bristol ticket in your campground. You could will, put in your will. And people did that. And you were on a waiting list for like five years just to get tickets to Bristol. Now they can't give them away. I mean, they did the All Star race for like twenty five bucks because you Bristol. could go to your kitchen and get a hot dog and a beer a lot cheaper than you can at the track. Josh Berry has announced that he will be running full time at JRM Motorsports again next year. I think in the Josh number eight. Berry will be the Cup driver for Junior. Maybe. In two to three years. Hey, he's going to race for a championship here at Bristol. I mean, Phoenix here in a couple I mean, of weeks. You heard the download, right, where he said it's too expensive. I'm not willing to drop $20, $30 million. Yeah. I don't blame him. I have a feeling the NASCAR charter bubble is going to pop. Or it just keeps going up. You really don't. I don't think it'll go keep going up. You've got to. It's Jeff Gordon said he doesn't make any money off of it. What's the point of the charter? Like stock? I'm going to run a car and it's, it's similar to stock. for a while. It's and then similar when to buying stock. I've yeah. made 20 million profit on the value of my charter. I'll sell it. What did Dale Jr. said he could have bought the same charter like six months ago for 7 million. Yeah. That's on him. Maybe he should have pulled the, pulled the plug at 7 million. Noah Gregson has a quote of the season, in my opinion. And Rob agreed with me on Twitter Noah said, had my nuts hanging out, threw them on the dash, and went for it. <laughs> I mean, that was his 
pre or post race interview response. So it's his nuts sag like a ninety year old man. I had my nuts hanging out, threw them on the dash, and I went for it. Noah's going to be great for this sport. I, I'm just saying, like, he's a great personality. The fans, when he takes the lead on Saturday on TV, you can hear the fans I, on TV cheer. I love when he unbuttons his shirt, oh, he walks all around the way down his belly button like he's freaking Elvis, like Tim Richmond, man. Yeah, but it, then he's just showing he doesn't wear the proper fire safety attire. And so, he probably has to put it on before he hops in the car. I don't think he does. Good for him. All right. Going to Homestead. The driver points heading into Homestead. Joey Logano is locked into the championship race. Currently, Ross Chastain is 18 points to the good. Chase Elliott is 17 points to the good. And Denny Hamlin is six points to the good. Below the cut line is William Byron at negative six. Chase Briscoe at negative nine. And Ryan does not have any luck. Blaney at negative 11. And Christopher Bubba took me out. Bell is 23 below the cut line. You think it's ironic he's 23 points below and 23 11 took him out? Well, that's pretty wacky, isn't it? That's kind of funny. So, what do you think? Who's going to the final? We know Joey. Well. I say Joey Ross. If Chase can make the final, Chase Briscoe can make the final four. He might win. He could win it. Would I that am, make him the most undeserving champion of the year? Of, Matt of Kenseth history? is probably the most oh, undeserving. Yeah. No, no wins pointing his way in. Yeah. Well, that was, that's why they came up with the playoffs. That's, that's why we had this crap show we're watching now. I mean, now. I would love Ryan Blaney to just ruin everything and win it without a win. I want Ross Chastain to win. Well, this is his I want year. Denny to win. I want Denny to win this year, but Ross, because of the car and everybody's crack noggins, no one's going to wreck Chastain except for Bubba. Has he made Bubba mad? I don't know. He better. I hope Ross is going back and looking at Bubba, footage just Bubba. to make sure he hasn't made Bubba but if mad. If Bubba gets suspended one race, it helps Ross out. Yeah. Because Bubba's the only one that's going to wreck it on purpose. And Ross could go out next weekend and win. So he could. All right, well, we are going to Miami. But before we get to Miami, let's talk about an urban legend I read about, Jamie. You ever heard of the baby train? I've never heard of the baby train. So the baby train is an urban legend told in the United States, the United Kingdom, and Australia. The legend first appeared in Christopher Morley's 1939 novel, Kitty Foyle. Is that how you say that? Uh, you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> According to the legend, a small town had an unusual high birth rate. This was allegedly caused by a freight train that would pass through the town, blowing its whistle, waking up all the residents at the early morning hours. Since it was too late to go back to sleep and too early to get up, the couples, we're going to assume they're married couples, would procreate. And that's resulted in a maybe a mini baby boon. Makes sense to me. So you wake up, can't go back to sleep. Got to do what you got to do, right? Have babies. Well, that'll, you know, if if your partner says you always fall asleep after, isn't that going to help you go back to sleep? Yeah, but it says it's too late to go back to sleep. So, so what? when did it blow its whistle at four a.m.? That's what I'm saying. Four thirty. I go back to sleep at 4.30. Yeah, I can go back to sleep. Sure. 30 minutes is all I need. 30 minutes makes a good sleep for me. That's like a really good nap. Mm. All right, we're going to Homestead, Jamie. What hotels do we want to avoid? Well, we want to avoid the Parisian Hotel Miami. It sounds really nice. Well, you know what? I had a hard time finding hilarious reviews. Did you? Yeah. It was difficult. There's a lot of crappy hotels, but I think they're all on meth that stay there. It's probably it's just, like bad. Well, it's that Miami. Was they're bad. hanging out at the beach and the clubs and the bars and the restaurants. They're not sleeping in there much in their rooms. So anyway, we got the Parisian Hotel Miami, Johnson Janot. That's a nuts. That's a BS name. Google Janot. one out of five. And Johnson says if American Airlines didn't put me here. I would have never known this hotel existed. And I'm not even sure American Airlines knows what kind of hole in the wall 
type of drab situation this is. I severe upgrade was needed about 20 years ago. I, I don't, it sounds like Biden <laughs> giving a speech. Not sure what he means, but this hotel gives me the first Bad Boys movie vibe. Elevator was out of order, so good luck to anyone needing to go up. Up a beyond first level. I'm just reading it as he wrote it, folks. Yeah. The hallways reminded you of an apartment complex. The actual rooms itself made me feel like I came out of prison into a halfway <laughs> house. I can't stress this enough. I think he went to jail. Probably. Well, yeah. He just got out of prison, and this is where American Airlines put him up at. Yeah. I didn't was, know they were helping prisoners now, but that's great of them. Maybe they wired him some money, Western Union, to fly home to Chicago. So you gangbang again. Well, how do you know he's not? Why is he in Miami? Maybe they flew him to Miami, and before he could hook back up with the gang he was in, he well, needed Well, look him. at this other weird crap. He says, this hotel, it's not a hotel. Well, you just stayed there. American Airlines put you. This guy's on something. Yeah, how can it not be a hotel but be a hotel? This gives you one-night stand vibes. Management needs to look into complete upheaval of its current condition. Upheaval? This guy's on something, man. I don't even know what that means. If not, sell. American Airlines should be ashamed of themselves for putting anyone at this place. I don't care if they're paying for it. I'd rather sleep at the gate than be in this place. Well, you have the right to do that. You got a ticket, right? Yeah. Well, I don't get it. Why didn't he sleep at the gate? I don't know. It, well, I'm assuming he didn't know that they had booked him a room in a hotel, not hotel, halfway house out of prison. So they probably assumed because he was a prisoner, he wouldn't mind. Like, dude, this is better Why than jail. Why they put him in a room with another guy in there from jail? What make happens at more, the Parisian hotel? Make stays? it feel a little more comfortable. At the Parisian Hotel. I've got a friend. Get shanked. Who was in prison. Did you? For a long time. Is he still there? No, he's out. I asked him about... Prison? Prison rapes. Yeah. He wouldn't tell me. He says, what happens in prison stays in prison. I would not want to go to prison. But he's a big guy, so I just said, oh, uh, okay. Definitely wouldn't want to go to prison. <laughs> I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do all I can to stay out of prison. Yeah, me too. I have a friend in prison right now. I well, probably need to get visit. Maybe him. you should ask him. I wrote. I'm writing him a letter to see if he's gonna let me go visit. I'm gonna ask him how it is to shower with angry men with life sentences. No, <laughs> no. I don't want to know. That's a story I don't want to hear. <laughs> I, I'm trying to get. A, I want to send him a letter to make sure because, like, you have to apply. So, yeah, you have to be approved yeah, by the prison system. And then you have to be approved by the prisoner. Yeah, so and it can take 120 days to get approved by the prison system. So I want to make sure he's cool with it before I go and – I mean, I've already submitted my stuff, honestly. But, you know, I'm still going to write him a letter and be like, hey, dude, we've known each other since we were little kids. Like, be cool with this. You should have put our little barcode. <laughs> Send him to us like a list of the podcast in jail. Hey, we are the number one podcast rated by homeless people, so we could be number one ho podcast in homeless prisons. We're the number one in Ireland. And number one. In, we're the number one American racing podcast in Ireland. Dude, in Australia, we're in the top 100 for sports podcasts. Well, you know, they're more like us Americans, those Australians. The Aussies? The Aussies. Throw another shrimp on the bobby. Like... Like we, Marcus we, Ambrose? Yeah, we didn't fight them in the Revolutionary You know, War. Marcus Ambrose said he had never heard of a blooming onion until he got to America. So who's lying? Marcus or the Outback? No, Outback is headquartered in Florida. Then why do they call it a blooming onion? Because they wanted to cash in on that. What was that Australian dude's movie back in the 80s? Oh, Crocodile, Crocodile Dundee. Dundee. Yeah. They were cashing in on the popularity. That's not a knife. This is a knife. Uh -huh. That's what that they movie. were doing. But... You know, when I was there, I asked for a Foster's at a pub. In Australia? Yeah. Did you get one? No. Well, they said, you're in Australia now, mate. You need to drink an Australian beer. That's exported for Americans. 
I forget what they gave me. It was a different beer. Our listeners in Australia, tell us it what the beer was. Was it Foster's? It was not Foster's. I, th- I thought Foster's was Australian for beer. It's Australian for beer in America. And you say it That's with a, what they told me you say, in all, you say it Australia. With a, you say it with a Middle Eastern accent? Yes. <laughs> that was an Austrian accent. Austria. Austria. That's not Australia. Yeah. I've been to Austria. Australia is plural. I've been to Vienna. That's yeah. That's not Australia. It's the capital of Australia. <laughs> What's that movie where um oh Dumb and Dumber? <laughs> She's like, I'm from Austria. He goes, Oh, throw another shrimp on the Bobby. <laughs> That's a good movie. And they race like we do, kind of. They have road courses, but it used to be super V eight, now it's just supercars. They just beat the crap out of each other. So it's similar to NASCAR. Yeah. Maybe. That's what we should do. We should we mix should them go, all together. What's that big circuit that they just raced last weekend up there? Where? Well, the up ro- is the wrong one. It's called Down Under. Huh? The Roval? <laughs> no. They have a track down there. It's a road course. Okay. And they do. The Australian It's Roval? a thousand mile race. Oh, that's cool. I watched it. That would be fun. I to go wonder to. why I forgot it. Let's look. All right. Where are we going next? We're going to. Motel Blue. Okay. By Sherry Cruz, 1960. You think that's her date of birth? It definitely is. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. She's from Oakland. She gave it a two out of five, which I don't do that often. But why would you give it a two out of five and you start it with a void? I don't know. That's not a two. That's a but one. She didn't go down the I would give it zero stars if I could hole. Instead, she gave it two. I could. I was going to give it zero. The rooms were not that bad. At least other than the couple of cockroaches she starts, we She starts with a void. Let's, let's, uh, what, but then she says the rooms aren't that bad. Yeah. That makes no sense. There seems to be quite a bit of prostitution in the motel. With the and in fact, one was trying to solicit my boyfriend right in front of me. Maybe the prostitute was soliciting both of you. She's working. Yeah. She doesn't care. It's a job. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Two of you, one of you, whatever. She's got to work. She was upselling. <laughs> For one of you, it's $500. Yeah, but I'm just, I, I don't For know. both of you, it's just $750. i am just, i am just thinking out loud here because this is a podcast, and if I was not thinking out loud, you wouldn't know what I was thinking. But do you really think a prostitute carries, cares if he's married? No. Or has a girl. He's not even got a ring on. This is his girlfriend. So. She doesn't care either one of them. Yeah. Like, sex is her job. She's not worried if they, they're married. So. Oh, sex and is her job. And according to Sherry Cruz, that's not the worst part. It's not. The worst part, the staff. With the exception of the young lady who checked us in. Who I, I'm assuming was nice. The staff was horribly rude, especially one particular housekeeper who was screaming at us in Spanish about our dog. How do you know? Well, she should know. Her last name's Cruz. Isn't that oh, Latino? Yeah. And she's from Oakland, California. Yeah. I've Even been, though we paid the additional $10 per night pet rent, which was actually legal as he is a service dog and has an ID to prove it. Is that like Herschel Walker's plastic sheriff's badge? <laughs> I've got an ID. Oh, he's got a badge. Watch out. This is McGruff the crying dog. The refrigerator was filthy and the floors underneath the bed did not appear to have been swept in months. The bathroom was a joke as the shower curtain was in the floor and the knob on the bathtub was broken. I would not recommend this place. But she gave it a two. I can't get over that. All right. So I have, where is it at? She said, the floors under the bed did not appear to have been swept in several months. That reminds me, I was staying at a Holiday Inn. I think it was me and you were staying at, um, the not a Holiday Inn, the Weeky Tiki Leaky. What was that? Best Western. Yes. They had the little signs under the bed. It says, yes, we cleaned even here. Except they had cobwebs all over them. <laughs> it's like dust, dirt, cobweb. It wasn't dirty. It's just dusty under that bed. That's so. funny. Hey, you know what? Wow. When we do Zoom meetings and stuff, yeah, they installed the underground wire. 
for my high speed internet. Oh. Out in the country. So. They said it'd be five to 10 business days before they hooked it up to the house. Well, we had the AT&T high speed internet hooked up here and they hooked it up and it was like a week and a half before it ever worked. Luckily, my wife is a genius and did not cancel Comcast until they got AT&T working. So. Are you still on Comcast? No, we're on AT&T now. They got it. It took them about a week and a half to finally get it. Well, I saw the guy installing it. He was a little wasted. So it's or drunk at your house? No, here. Oh, oh man, you saw it. he drove through my front yard. He couldn't walk a straight line. Uh, so, <laughs> he buried he, the cable zigzag. Yeah, yeah. That so they <laughs> laid the cable out in the yard, crooked, like not crooked, but zigzaggy. Not, not. It's a straight shot from the pole to the corner of the house, <laughs> but not with the wire. And the dude that come out to bury it, he just followed the wire instead of burying, cutting a straight trench through the yard and putting the wire in it. He just followed the wire all zigzag like through the yard. I mean, it, it's grown over with grass at this point, but no matter. It was just people just don't care no more, man. Ever oh, since yeah. COVID, customer services went to crap, and everybody uses it as an excuse, like, "Oh, we're sorry, our customer service is so bad," but it's because of COVID. So this next one, Starlight West Motel, is not a funny one. It's really kind of sad. But it's the first one of this kind that I've seen, and it's a review by a mother, not the person that stayed there. And it's Tamara B. on Yelp. She gave it a one out of five. And this is why you should avoid this, because it looks like murders happen here. She says, my daughter was only 28 years old when she was murdered in this sleazy motel on September 10, 2014, by her ex-boyfriend. The motel should be closed down. The motel is set up so that surveillance can't see activity, as it should. There is no security guard, guard nor are there CCTV monitors screened properly. There is no surveillance in the garage where you park your vehicle, therefore the perfect place to commit a crime. When I went to check it out, I saw prostitutes and drug dealers hovering around. And then you have the employees who apparently look the other way, either because they do not have enough common sense to report when they have knowledge of any type of suspicious activity or are afraid of losing their jobs. Apparently, the police officers that are regular customers, <laughs> you know what I mean, obviously look the other way. Please do yourself a favor. Stay away from this type of establishment. It's dangerous. This place should be not be in business. So, you know, just as a warning, and I don't know the situation of the ex-boyfriend. I Googled this hotel and could not find any murder reports. I'm just saying, as it stated, I would stay away. Yeah. And dude, to be honest, I'm not questioning this I've lady's been... truthfulness because, dude, this is a big deal to get on. Your daughter's murdered and you get on Yelp to say what happened. That's what I'm saying. Like, we've never had a review start out with my daughter was only 28 when she was murdered in this sleazy motel. I mean, we September 10th, 2014. It was 9 p.m. Her ex-boyfriend had been rage drinking, came home from work late, jumped through the window, and murdered her. It doesn't say that. but No, but still, <laughs> I mean, that's better. what happened there. That's what I'm saying. Like, we've never had this. This sounds like a horror movie. If, I'm not even going to imagine something happened to my kids. Let's just say don't go there. Probably not posting it on Yelp, though. I would have never thought to do that. Well, it's almost been 10 years, so. All right, where are we yeah. going next? Next is the Hotel Redland Homestead, just around the corner from the track. Redland. This hotel and homestead was the scene of a tragic fire. It is haunted by ghosts. What? Yes, yeah, Sarah Moreno. She actually wrote it on August 23, 2022. What? Well, it's so, it says by Sarah Moreno. And Esther Piccolino. Well, you're listening, leaving out Jessica Sereno. Yeah. You have Sarah Moreno and Jessica Sereno. So and, this isn't give a rating because these are paranormal people. And Esther Piccolino. We're going to go with a one. So we're going founder of the organization, Paranormal Research and Investigative Studies Midwest, PRISM. P-R-I-S-M for short. Rodriguez, this is written very bad. 
they're not professional riders. They're <laughs> they're ghost hunters. Obviously. Rodriguez was very clear in his interview with Miami Occulto, which I guess is a newspaper <laughs> for people in the occult. There is a room in the hotel, Redland, that has presence that can be felt, and his his equipment captured it. What? Yeah. His Where equipment has captured it. Okay. Where did the female voice that the machines recorded come from? Could it be the woman who says she was thrown out the window? Perhaps pushed by an abusive husband? Hotel. And who is this young Lee who gives his name when the ghost hunters ask his identity? It is a suggestion, or do we really hear his name? Lee. David Pierce Rodriguez, who heard his first weird noises and had con contacted the ghost from a very young age, says he no longer wants people to believe in them. Whoever wants to believe, believes, he says. What? And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just as discombobulated. I can't believe I actually said that without stuttering. Discombobulated. Yeah. It's just as discombobulated <laughs> as some of our uneducated reviewers that we do weekly. No, oh, man, we always pick the most educated. They still haven't released the penalty. <laughs> Nope, not at all. Well, like um, Bob Pockers, spokesman for NASCAR, said earlier that, you know, NASCAR usually don't release it early. They usually wait till late in the day when it's a good one. So I think they won't do anything. So when Ben Kennedy takes over NASCAR and runs it straight into the ground, what are we going to cover then? Just hotel reviews, urban. hauntings, and urban legends? Probably. Okay. Let's we'll yeah. keep the name, though. I think we should review. What's it, what's it called? An anagram? Is that what our name is? Anagram? Polygram. Polygram? I have no idea. Polygamy? No. No, that's something that's else completely not. different. That's Mormon. <laughs> I don't think it's Mormon. No, polygamy. No, it's not a Mormon. It's Isn't that where everybody marries millions of people? No, that's like that's, a, What's that? That's M. Jung U. Perry Melly. Perry Melly? Polyjuice. <laughs> that's Jehovah's Witness, isn't it? Polyjuice? <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> it's the Polyjuice potion. You ever wondered... And you know, I hope, we don't have any, I hope we don't have any Jehovah's Witness listeners. Don't get angry. I don't think they because, can listen to podcasts. Uh, they probably can't. They can't drink coffee or have Christmas either. So they definitely can't listen to podcasts. You ever wondered though? You drive through all these small towns. There is a Jehovah's Witness church or whatever they call it, temple, sacrificial building. It's always gated up though. But it's the same building everywhere. It's like they had one blueprint and they said, it's "Let's cheaper. build this everywhere." Cheaper. One blueprint, one design, center block building. Save money. You're, nobody goes. They're always out on their bikes, knocking on doors. I don't know a Jehovah's Witness, though. Where do they get all the money? How, you wouldn't know one. They're, they're out riding their bikes. You're not a Jehovah's Witness. Are so they allowed to ride bikes? That's how they go door to door. I thought that was, once again, the Mormons. No. That's, well, maybe they I had a friend I grew up. He was Mormon. His his dad owned a, a chain of car dealerships. I'm not even going to pretend to know how it works. They did all dress the same, and they had the same bikes. Yeah. They actually, I knew them in D.C. They were missionaries in Macon. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Baptist. My parents are like, what the heck? We know you. Aren't you friends with our son? And they're like, yeah. You still Mr. and Mrs. Farrow, what are you doing down here? My mom's like, I'm from down here. My dad said, I don't know what I'm doing down here. Take me back up north. I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> Help. All right. I forget the whole point of that story. I mean, we were talking about Harry Potter and Polyjuice Potion, and... Polyjuice is... Is from Harry Potter. You sure it's not from an occult? No, it's... Polyjuice Potion is used in Harry Potter. That's what they turned I in... I thought Polyjuice is what they gave all those guys that had the black Nikes, and they killed themselves, and they threw sheets over their heads. <laughs> that was crack. Was it crack? <laughs> oh. That was at... Um, what was that? That was in Texas, right? Or was that... I thought it was over in uh, California. Yeah, where they drank the, the Kool-Aid, right? Dude was that, that was the shooting. That was the Adventist dude that made machine guns and yeah. shot at the FBI. In Waco? Yeah, Waco of Waco. The um the one you're talking about, the polyjuice where they wore the Nikes and killed each other. Yeah. That was where they drank the Kool-Aid. That was in California. Yeah, they had bunk beds. They all like, they had their transference. That's why there's that saying clothing. it says don't drink the Kool-Aid. What do we do weird as Baptist? We don't drink the Kool-Aid. We wear. Have you noticed we wear weird, colorful dress shirts? I don't. I wear the same thing I wear to work to church. Just a dress shirt and slacks. Well, I do too, but... You have more colorful ones? 
I don't think it's, I think it's, it's cultural. Okay. I think it's just bred in my brain from going to a Baptist church. I pick Baptist clothes. I don't know. I'm trying to think if I, if like, you ever notice like the older men, which I don't think it's just Baptist. I think it's just church in general. They always wear those saggy pants. That's because their nuts hang. <laughs> their nuts are down to their kneecaps. Like, <laughs> if you you can tell the age difference by looking at their slacks. Like, you have the younger guys wearing the skinny the skinny pants, all the way to the old people wearing saggy pants. They've been wearing. I can tell. Like, they wore those pants a hundred pounds ago. I can tell you what you want to avoid at the urinal with old people. They don't have the thrust. Not even the thrust I have, and I'm no youngster. But they, that thing is like a sprinkler. You can't get mad because you're at church, but you're sitting there at the urinal, and you notice there's driplets on the top of your loafers. And you're like, oh, geez. And you look over, and the guy's like 90 years old. And you can't get mad oh, so at him. He peed on you. Well, I don't. I've never been peed on at church, at a concert, at a race, at the shopping mall, at a truck stop. I've never had anybody. Well, we what need... I did, because I'm a curious idiot, he got done. And when he's washing his hands, I went over to look. And you asked him? He just shot all over the place. Why'd you pee on me, dude? <laughs> no, I'm not going to. He's older and I'm at church. I'm not going to start a fight. I'm not Bubba. So y'all were basically. And the urinals next to each other. You know what you need to do for that guy? You need to buy him a squirt wee pee doll. You can get a set of two squirt wee peas. <laughs> and this will bring me to 20 years ago before my wife and I had kids. Jody had a Miata. And we're at church. That's a car. Yeah. Two seater convertible. We were at church. And this old dude peed all over himself at the end of church. And I asked him if he was okay, needed any help. I thought he was having an old person dementia time. A moment. Which I think he was. And he told me he didn't have a way home. And the guy's name was John Carroll. And he was one of those deacons that is like, He's been a deacon forever, so we just make him a deacon. And he was descended from the founders of Maryland. This was in Maryland. So he was a big deal, even though he lost his mind like Joe Biden. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean you need a ride home? And he said, there's no one here to give me a ride home. And I said, well, I'll give you a ride home. So I got a bunch of paper towels and put it <laughs> on the seat, passenger seat. And I told my wife, because he didn't live too far from the church, I'm going to drop off. Deacon Carroll and bring him back. He's kind of, and I, you know, behind his back made the crazy and yeah. showed, pointed at his, my crotch. So she right. would see that he peed all over himself. See. And then I took those paper towels and made sure she saw it. I put it in the seat and he peed himself again as I was driving him home and it went through. Yeah. Cloth seats. Yeah. We took it to a detailer and had him. Never got it out probably. Well, all I know is I was never allowed to drive her car again and had to ride in that pit seat <laughs> for the rest of the time we owned the car. That's payback? Uh-huh, that was payback. All right, we're going to Homestead. Homestead is a 1.5-mile oval track. It is a true oval, not a tri-oval, not a quad oval, no dog legs. It is a straight front and a straight back stretch. Therefore, it is a 1.5-mile oval track. It has 18 to 20 degrees of progressive banking. There's four turns. It's made of asphalt. It will seat 48,000 people. NASCAR owns it. First opened in 1995. The race is at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time on NBC and MRN Radio. Denny Hamlin has 17 starts here, three wins and 11 top tens. Kyle has 17, or Kyle Bush has 17 starts, two wins and 10 top tens. Truex has 17 starts, one win, and seven top tens. Harvick has the most starts everywhere we go now. And it, it almost makes me feel bad for him every time I say it. But he has 21 starts, one win, and 18 top tens. 18 of 21. That's pretty dang good. Joey Logano has 13 starts, one win, and six top tens. My picks for this weekend, Tyler Reddick, Denny Hamlin, Chase Briscoe, and Kyle Larson. I'm going Denny Hamlin. This is his ticket to the final four. 
I'm going Ty Gibbs. <laughs> Gibbs is going to get caught. I'm cheating. going. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go with Corey LaJoy. And for my final pick, can I pick Kurt Bush last week? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to pick him again. He announced his retirement. Yeah, the race I said he's got to come back and win. Yeah. So <laughs> we're not picking him. I'm going to go with Harvick. All right. I think the Fords are, have been pretty decent on a mile and a half. As long as they don't get caught cheating again. Well, as we know, they're they're going after Denny through Ty now. That was the random pick after the race. Yeah, that's no shocker there. No, not very random. We need the lottery balls. All right. Still nothing. Still nothing. I ain't got nothing. Are they going to do nothing? They might not do anything. Maybe. Maybe they don't do anything. At this point, I don't think it even matters. I think most people are going to be so burnt out over it, it's not going to matter. You know, Ross could win. Ross? Have could we win. already said goodbye to everyone, or are we still going? No, we haven't said goodbye. Oh, okay. You got anything else? No, other than Ross could win. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, who follows the show, shares us on social media, and listens each week. We greatly appreciate it. Check us out on Spotify and rate us. Follow us. <laughs> rate us, people. Follow us on Twitter. We're at Car Backwards. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts and make sure you leave us a review there. And check out our website, racecarbackwards.com. Well, just like typical, as soon as we finish recording, NASCAR releases the information saying that they have suspended Bubba Wallace for one race. He will not be in Homestead, Miami this weekend. Due for the incident on the track with Kyle Larson. Jamie, what do you think, man? 100% agree. The money, as we talked about in the podcast we've already recorded, doesn't mean squat to Bubba. Yeah, the points don't mean anything. That don't, don't mean Bubba ain't going to win the championship. There are car owners' points, but obviously Bubba don't care about that either. But you pull him out of the car and sit his ass, you might care about that. So I, I'm good with it. I think it's the only way to get anybody's attention is make them sit at home. The money, not going to get these guys' attention. Not the not the big drivers, at least. And if he appeals it, they won't hear him till next week. He's already missed the race. <laughs> so And the way NASCAR's went lately, yeah. is their appeals process has made it worse. So yeah, he appeals it, he, race, might miss, he might miss the next weekend. He'll appeal it Tuesday next week, two days after the race. That would so. suck. Like, the race he's missing is Homestead, Miami. If there was a track I would want to go to, that's, it would be Homestead. What do you th do you think he still goes? Is he allowed on the – NASCAR owns the track. Can't they ban him? You think they're going to notice him walking in if he's in disguise? Just walk in no. as a fan, buy a general emission ticket, and go sit with the fans. He can ride in someone's camper. I, honestly, I think that would probably be that would be a cool move by Bubba. Go to the race, sit with the fans, buy a ticket, sit in the stands with the fans. That would be awesome, really. I mean, it'd be a good publicity move for him. Yeah, good PR. He could, he could start tweeting. Yeah, he could tweet from. Well, they don't have Wi-Fi at the track usually, so he can bring a hotspot. Well, the hot well you know, are gonna Talladega brought hot spots. They brought yeah. it on. Yeah, we had, that was NASCAR. We had, it. we had internet at Talladega. We didn't have any phone signal, but we had internet. We had internet at Charlotte. Yeah. That's because we were in the media center. Yeah, but. You, the closer you got to the track, the yeah, less. The worse it got. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, had, we had internet uh, 24 hours of Daytona. At Daytona yeah, we did. This year, so. Except our fingers were so cold and <laughs> we were too big in our get clubs. phone out. So. Yeah. But, no, I think it's uh, for once I'm going to congratulate NASCAR for making the right decision. Yep, I agree. No points, no fine, just a one, week or one race suspension. We move on, move past it. No stupid probation, no stupid anger management. Just you live and learn, right? Well, that should be his anger management lesson. <laughs> you sit at home. You keep driving like an idiot, you sit at home. That's right. All right, y'all have a good week. We'll holler at you next week. Bye. Again. Thanks for listening to Race Car Spelled Backwards.